For this project, you are going to need plaster of Paris. Now you don't need a bucket this big. You can find it in a smaller carton at Hobby Lobby, Amazon, even Walmart. But you just need some plaster of Paris and <clears throat> some styrofoam plates, um, the dessert sauce that you can get also from Amazon or the grocery store. <laughs> But we just take the styrofoam plate and we like this size because we're going to make some Christmas ornaments. And if we get a large plate, that might be a little bit too big unless you have a really big Christmas tree. It takes a little bit of practice because you're going to draw a design into this plate and you have to break through the this little plastic coating. But what you don't want to do is to punch a hole all the way through because we're going to pour our plaster of Paris mixture into this plate. And if you punch a hole, then it will just leak through. Now, if you're doing your design and you do accidentally punch a hole, it's no big deal. Just take a piece of tape, like masking tape, duct tape, and just cover that back so that the water from the plaster of Paris doesn't leak through and you'll still be okay. Now, we have done a printable for you with the names of God so that you could do the names of God ornament for your tree. And the front would be the name in Hebrew or Greek. And on the back, once it's dry, you can glue the rest of the printable, which is the definition of the name of God and a Bible verse where that name was used. And we just like to find creative ways to place God's word and reminders of who God is wherever we can. And that happens to be on a Christmas tree. Now, plaster of Paris is brittle. It's kind of like ceramic that's not been fired. <laughs> it's not as strong. So you're, you want to be really careful how you use this. Um, it looks like it looks like a concrete or ceramic, but it's really not. And it's, it's very fragile. Um, and the depth that we're going to be using, you can see the plate, how deep that little spot right there is. So you can do anything you want, but if you use our printable, you're going to see that we have flipped the fonts and the words backwards. And that is because when you pour the plaster into the plate and you turn it over, remove it, it will be in the correct direction. If you do this word just as it is here, just like that. Um, when you pour the plaster in here and flip it over, it's going to be backwards. Um, I printed this in the wrong direction. So don't do as I do. Do as I'm telling you to do, and yours will turn out a whole lot better. Now, so Nana and I were playing around with this idea, and we forgot to flip the font direction. <laughs> we made several mistakes on this piece of plaster, so listen carefully to what we did wrong. First... The writing is in the correct direction on the plate, but you notice when we flip out the plaster, it's backwards. That is because you need to have your writing going in the wrong direction on the plate. So when you flip it out, you can read it <laughs> without a mirror. <laughs> the other thing that is wrong is we used a blue ballpoint pen. Um, the blue ink transferred to the plaster of Paris because it was wet. So it just pulled the ink over. Now, if you are using like a glitter pen or a gold or a metallic pen or a color that matches your decor, then by all means, don't worry about it. If you decide to paint your plaster of Paris, don't worry about it. But if you want to leave it in this natural state like this, we suggest using a metallic or glitter pen or just a white gel pen. You want something that rolls real smooth because it's the rolling that is indenting the plate or the styrofoam so that your designs are raised. Can you see that? When you pull them out, once they're dry and cured. Now I drew designs in this plate and you can see it's the reverse, same way with the letters. And you want to keep your designs fairly simple. You don't want to get too intricate, too detailed because um, it starts getting muddy on the plate and it will muddle your design also. All right, so don't do the wrong thing. Let's do it the correct way. We'll have God's word on your tree or God, the names of God on your tree. 
Um, we also did some fun fonts with jo uh, Love, Joy, and Peace. So you can just use those. And we did flip them for you so that you, <laughs> you can do this the correct way. Place your word. Yours will be in the backward direction. You're going to place it down, add your little tape, and then just go over the lines and they will transfer to the plate. Then you're able to come in here with your pen and deepen those lines um, because the deeper the lines are, the more raised the plaster is going to sink down into this the plaster is going to sink down into these grooves and it's going to raise that on the plaster when you take it out. So we've got our design, L, meaning the strong one um, of God. We also did some other fun fonts of love, joy, and peace. So you can print these out and then put this in your plate. Put this in your plate. Now, see how I got the plaster on the plate? It doesn't stick to it, so it's going to be, that's the messy part. And then, see the edges here? I'll just take some sandpaper and sand those down. And you can see the design. Isn't that fun? So, this one was love. And we have, let's see what happened. How did these do? See, it just pops right out. And there's joy. And peace. And I'll just sand these edges down, smooth them off. And then I might just leave these natural or I might paint them, but I do like them looking just natural. So we have joy in two different ways. Like this one. So I'm gonna show you how to mix this and pour it. It's really, really easy. You're just gonna take an old bowl or a container and plaster is two to one. It's two plasters to one cup of water. So just equal whatever you measure your plaster with. Do two of those and one water. We're not going to need much, so because I just have these two designs. So this is a yes, about a half a cup, and then you mix your water. And I'm going to mix just a little extra, so I have a left stirring time. You don't want it to be peanut butter. Just smush it down. Make sure you get it mixed up really well. You want it like pancake batter and really smooth. And then you just pour it into your plate. And then I just kind of jiggle the plate a little bit to pop out any of the air and kind of get it, making sure it goes down into the design. Don't hit it too hard, it's gonna splatter out. All right, and you just let this dry. Um, it takes it, I mean, you can, it'll be hard to touch in about 10 minutes for sure but I would leave it for several hours, maybe even overnight before you paint it or before you remove it, just so that it has time to harden in the design and you won't lose it when you pull it out. Now, word of caution, <clears throat> plaster of Paris hardens when it's mixed with water. Do not pour it down your sink drain or it will harden in your pipes and then you have a whole nother thing to fix that art just can't do. While we wait for our plaster to dry, I'm gonna take these that are already dry and just show you how pretty the liquid watercolor is when you paint with it and some of the things that you can do. To create the ornaments out of plaster of Paris and be able to hang them to your wreath or Christmas tree. And what we did 
is we taped a piece of straw through the plate, the styrofoam plate, just to hold the straw in place and to also create a barrier so that the plaster doesn't seep through the hole. So what we did is we just found our center, took a, I mean, I'm just using a uh, colored pencil, and you want to stay off the edge a little bit so that you don't compromise your plaster. And I'm just going to push that through. So next, that we have our hole, and do it from the front because see, it makes this messiness in the back, and we don't want that to show up in our plaster. So push through the front, you have a smooth edge, and then just cut a straw. Push that through the hole a little bit, and just a couple pieces of tape to hold it. So now we can pour our plaster into our plate and it will create a hole that we can string ribbon or twine through to hang our ornaments on the tree. The other trick that we learned was to seal the ornament. So mine's still wet, but I'm gonna seal it with a mixture of Elmer's glue and water. You could use decoupage glue, um, but just wanted something to kind of coat it and seal it. And this is gonna allow our Bible verse that you can print off from our printables to stick to the back of the ornament now. Apparently, Pastor Paris likes to weep a little bit. The moisture likes to seep out. Everything I have glued to the back of my ornaments did not hold, and the paper seat uh, had, had the paper acted like a sponge and just pulled the water out of the plaster. So, we're going to seal it with a layer of the glue, which I've done and then we'll be able to glue to the back of the plaster. So another thing you can do with the plaster, because it is very soft, you can take a pencil and you can just engrave or cut into the plaster. And what you'll end up with is something similar to the Ray Dunn uh, pottery that you can find. Now I used a silver pencil and the pencil does, it did smear a bit when I put my glue on there. So I would advise using like a white color pencil something that you can just cut into the groove because it will transfer the ink from a pen or the lead color from your pencil. So I would use white. So I'm just gonna use a white pencil and see it's so soft. You can go into the grooves and just remove the dust. And when you're done, just brush a layer of Elmer's glue and water or decoupage glue on top of it, and it will seal your ornament. Then you can add glitter if you want to glitter the edges. Um, you can use a gold marker. You can do details on your ornament, however you want to dress up your ornaments. This is just a basic plaster ornament that we're going to be able to put the names of God or scripture or peace love, joy onto our tree and our decor this year.